Hello, everyone. I am uh, Mike Sandoval, and I am going to create a tutorial on dot loop basics. This will not cover everything about dot loop. What it will do is show you the basics of dot loop. What I hope to do in this class is to uh, explain to you what a loop is, how to create people, how to put your documents in the loop, how to send them to the consumer, what the consumer sees, and then sending it back. Uh, there's a lot more to dot loop than, uh, than what we're going to cover in this class. I just want to cover the basics. Uh, be looking for some updated and some advanced dot loop classes. So with that, dot loop is a document management system that is provided with your membership to valleymls.com. You can use as much or as little of it as you would like. Um, I'm going to go and again, just explain some of the basics. So with that, I want you to look at the top. We're going to talk about loops. Loops are everything that uh, it's the entire transaction. It's the holding of the entire transaction. I like to think of dot loop as an endless filing cabinet. So the program itself is an endless filing cabinet. The loops are the hanging file folders that hang within that file cabinet. So the loops are going to contain all the little folders that are necessary for that transaction. And we're going to concentrate on two of those folders. We're going to concentrate on people and we're going to concentrate on documents. So that's where your loop is. That's what your loop is. Tasks are a uh, much uh, misunderstood or not used uh, aspect of dot loop. We're not going to cover it in this class, but you can create task lists that uh, gives assignments and allows people to check off their assignments within the loop about uh, whether what stage you are in the contract, what stage you are working with the buyer or the listing. People are just that. There's going to be the people that are involved in the transaction. And templates are all the documents that you're going to need for your real estate transaction. Uh, one thing that I stress to you in dot loop and any other application that you're going to be using is make sure that your application is personalized with your picture and all your information. So you would click on the upper right hand corner, make sure that your account has your picture and the correct information. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a loop. One of the things that dot loop recommends, always check with your broker, but dot loop recommends that all loops that work with listings have the address. Pretty self-explanatory. Then all of the loops that are uh, working with buyers, name it after the buyer. Just put the buyer's name on it. Uh, in this market, there's a lot of uh, multiple offers that are have to be submitted on multiple properties. And um, so you can always change the name of the loop later. But if you have five transactions for Mike Sandoval, then you're going to know that uh, um, that you're going to have five different loops. And it doesn't do that. If you have one Mike Sandoval, then you can add all the transactions, the failed ones inside of that. And then you can rename the loop for the property that uh, he ultimately uh, wins. So again, we're going to create the loop right here says add loop. We're going to add a loop. Naming the loop, sellers put the property address, buyers put their name. That's what's suggested. Always check with your broker. But in this case, we're going to be working with a buyer. So I'm going to name it after the buyer. We click our continue. The next is where you can upload a picture and here's a commercial. You can add a picture of a listing or if you have a picture of the buyer, you can add that in there. So every time you send any correspondence to them, it's going to have your picture on it, but it's also going to have their picture and it's just a nice touch. When you've done that or if you decide not to, click done. And what it's going to do is create your loop and it's going to create your loop with the name of what you named it. Again, you can change the name at a later time. We're going to choose the type of loop that it is. And in this case, we're working with a buyer. So it's going to be a purchase. 
and we can choose the status. It is a pre-offer. It is not under contract. When it becomes under contract, then we'll change the status there. And you can put the price in a little bit later as far as uh, once you establish a price or once you agree upon a price. We're going to click view lo uh, loop and it's going to take us inside the loop. So remember I said the two file, uh, file folders inside that hanging file folder that we call the loop is going to be documents and it's going to be people. So first we're going to add documents and you can add documents in a couple of different ways. The most popular and the most prevalent way of adding documents is going to be from your templates. When you click on your templates, you're going to see that all the folders that you have that are similar to the MLS documents are going to be in the templates. You can see everything that you're going to need. So for this transaction, I'm going to click addendum to a contract. Uh, I'm going to look for a um, finance sales contract because this is a transaction. Uh, we're going to submit an offer. We're going to look for an inspection addendum. Um, we're going to click on a recad. We're going to look for our inspection addendum, a limited consensual dual agency. Anything that you want to um, add into this for your transaction, do. Once you've chose all the documents that you're going to need for that transaction, you'll click copy. It's going to import all those documents in there and you will now look and see that the addendum, the finance sales contract, the inspection addendum, everything that you copied is now in your loop. Now, dot loop has many wonderful uh, attributes and characteristics to it. One of them is going to be the auto filling and the e-signing. We're going to go and we're going to look at both of those in just a few minutes. But the auto uh, auto fill comes when you take the information and you're going to type it in, and it will auto fill into your documents. So you've added all your documents. Now you're going to add people. Since we're working with the buyer, you're going to click on add person and you're going to see that there's going to be two required fields. You're going to have to have a name and a role. If you're going to send this via email, you of course you'll have to have an email address, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to start typing in the name of your buyer. Now you can see that it's going to autofill my information since I've already in there. If not, you would have to manually add the um, email address. Notice here, you have to choose a role in this transaction. Every per person in the loop has to have a role assigned to them. Uh, the privileges will show in just a little bit, but everybody has to have a role. If they are in the loop, they're going to have to have a role. You can click here, and as you see, in this case, it's going to be the buyer. There's a place for the seller. If you have an admin person, you're going to have uh, a place to select them, others, whatever it may be. But in this case, we're going to click buyer. Now, a couple of things I want to uh, warn you about. Even though you may have a team or looking to join a team or have a team in place, do not click add to my team because what that does is allow the other person, the person that you add to their team, access to every one of your loops. And everybody starts off with great intentions, but the fact of the matter is sometimes life happens and teams that start off don't always end up. So don't add that. You can always add a person in the loop manually. It doesn't take that long and you assign them a role. So when you go ahead, type this information, we're going to click add person. And you now see under the people, there's Mike Sandoval, the buyer, and Mike Sandoval, who's the owner of this loop, or this dot loop account, notice that there's not a role here. I click on it and I'm, I can either be the buyer's agent or the seller's agent. In this case, I'm working as the buyer's agent. I'll click here. And now I am pretty well set up for getting this transaction in, taken in place. One thing I would like for you to notice right here, the next step is to click the view details. And what you're going to do is you're going to type in here all the necessary information 
uh, about the property, the property you're getting ready to submit an offer on. Dot loop, again, you heard me talk about autofill capabilities. You type in the information one time and it auto populates it into every one of the fields. So instead of you having to type your name in all the time, the property address, once you type the property address, it's going to auto populate it into the system. So we're gonna be right here. You can see we've got the buyer's agent. We've got the buyer here. Uh, if you want to add people, if you know the listing agent, go ahead and add the listing agent at this time also. Add the seller's name so it will auto populate in there. You don't know their email, but type their name and get that information in there. Don't leave it blank because when the other party starts adding it, it's going to take your signatures off. So try to fill in as much information as you possibly can. Start typing in address. Well, I'm just going to make up some address now. I'm going to encourage you that if you'll notice that it starts to pop up all different property addresses. If you are working in your MLS and you type in a, a property address that pops up and that's the one you're going to be using in this transaction, go ahead and accept it. I know people think I don't want to add it in there. Dot Luke's going to be looking at all my information, but what it does, it keeps it clean. It sends it to the right email, puts it in that loop so nobody loses it. If you've had a listing on Dot Loop and you know that somebody doesn't accept it, there's another loop that's created. And so it can create some problems that way. If you go ahead and accept this information, let me see if I can type in an address. Um, notice that right here, it says this property, if I click on that, what it will do is submit an offer to this listing agent and take all the information in there, but more importantly, it will put it in that same loop. So don't be afraid, accept the property address when you type it up and it comes up, click on it and have that, that way it eliminates that loop, uh, your document's going somewhere else except to that loop. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and start typing in this information. Again, once you type it in, it only it takes one time and you don't have to take, uh, type it in anymore. So you're gonna fill out all this information, everything that you possibly can. We're gonna put the purchase price in. We're gonna just choose an arbitrary number of $150,000. If you wanted to go ahead and put those commissions in, if you had the listing, that would be fine. We're submitting an offer today. We're going to close this thing because we're good. We're going to close it in two weeks. Um, if you were going to put any inspection dates, so forth and so on. We're going to go ahead and type in all the legal description. If it was meet and bounds, if it was a certain lot number, subdivision, you just go ahead and type that in. And it's going to auto populate it. When I click save, it's going to save that data. And now when I create the transaction and start filling in the information, I don't have to add it in. So recapping, what I've done is I've created a loop. I've created that hanging file folder. I've named it for the purchaser. Step two was to take all the documents that I need for this transaction. In this case, it's a purchase and I copied it into the loop. Then the next step was to add people to the loop. I added the people. I clicked on the view details and I started typing in all the property information that I could that I knew of and could uh, think of. So now we are, we've got everything ready. We've got our documents, we've got our people. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create 
the beginning of the loop. We're going to start the transaction. So I'm going to select the document. In this case, I'm just going to work with one document, but you could select all of them and you click on open. And what it does, it takes that document and it opens it up. You'll notice here that it's got the buyer's name. It has the property address here. If I had added the seller's name and I didn't do it, I can add it here. Let's see if I've got Sam Seller. and he's a seller, I'm going to add the person in. So now you can see that I've got the buyer, I've got the seller, I've got the buyer's agent here, and if there was a listing agent, I'd go ahead and select the listing agent. Notice that I typed in, and when I typed in the few the details, it says 123 Main Street here. If there's other information that I need to add, I'm going to add the license number. Here's the, if I want to add a different earnest money, check here, but notice that the purchase price auto filled, the contract date or the closing date has auto filled. It's got the buyer's name. It's got the legal description right here. When I click auto filled, it's going to take all the information that I typed in to the view details and also anything that I manually added here in the uh, auto fill section. When I click auto fill, notice that on the document, it populates all that information in. You don't have to type it in. Every place in this, uh, in all the documents, every place that has the purchaser's name, dot loop will automatically put Mike Sandoval in. If there's information here that you need to uh, change or add, let's say you didn't have in there, you didn't know the type of loan, but he's going to be getting a conventional loan, you can type in any of these areas here. You'll type in the listing company. Notice that it put in this information about me. It's auto-populated it in. You can go in and manually add as you have to. But notice that it auto-populates. And also notice here that it says on the purchaser's initial, there's a place that says MS. I'm going to show you how that comes into play when the consumer gets it here. Now notice that if you have anything to add in the additional provisions, you can. You can type in that the property must appraise for the sales price. You can put in that the washer and dryer convey it no property. You can put in that whatever else that you want to, um, seller to remove the uh, tree in the front yard, whatever it is, you can type that information here in the additional provisions that you would before. You're going to scroll down. All this information is auto-populated. It is filled in. You want to put the listing salesperson in here. Um, let's see. Put their email address. Again, one time and it, 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 you're good to go. Now, you'll notice that once you filled all the documents out that you need to, you'll click your save or save and share. Save means it'll save it in the loop. And if you have to go back and add it, let's say you're trying to pre-fill some information, it'll save that document with all the information that you've typed in. If you are ready to commence with the transaction, you will click on save and share. And what save and share does is save the information that you've typed in, and it's going to share it with the people involved in the transaction. So when I click save and share, it's going to pull up right here who this is going to go to. Now, I'm not ready to send it to the seller, but I'm working with the buyer. And it says Mike Sandoval here. I have nine fields assigned. And notice here it says can sign. Anybody that you add into the loop is going to have notice one of four privileges. They can view only, can sign, can fill in sign, and can edit in private. The buyer and the sellers are going to default to can sign. It is highly encouraged that you 
give the buyer only privileges and buyer and seller only the privilege of can sign or can fill and sign. Can fill and sign means that you may have some forms that they're going to have to type some information in, but it's strictly optional. If you don't, you can put just can sign. And what that does is it allows them to sign an initial anywhere that they need to. Notice that the first privilege was a view only. The attorney is going to need a copy of the ratified contract. The lender is going to need a copy of it. Uh, the parents or the in-laws or whoever it is of the people that are involved in the transaction may want to see everything that's going on. They don't need to have a voice or any part of the transaction, so you will give them view only. They can only look at the paperwork. They can't do anything about it. This can edit in private is only for your in-office admin person that can change it or the other agent. Do not give the seller or the buyer the ability to can edit in private because as you ratify an offer, then what's going to happen is somewhere on down the road, somebody may want to make a change, an arbitrary change. And once they do that, it completely takes away all the initials and you don't have uh, an enforceable contract. So again, recapping, buyers and sellers can sign. Any interested party that just needs a copy, view only. Can edit in private is going to be for the other agent and if you have someone in your office that needs access to it. Also notice right here where it says attach PDF to email. Let me encourage you to go ahead and to meet your ethical and legal obligations of leaving documents for the consumer. Click this. Some people say, well, I sent them the dot loop, but all you did was send them documents to sign. You didn't really leave them a copy in your code of ethics and your Alabama license law states that you're to leave copies of this document. So when you click attach PDF to mail to the email, you are fulfilling your obligation. So you'll notice right here, it gives me a share. I'm sharing all the documents needed in this transaction to the buyer, Mike Sandoval, has nine fields signed and Mike Sandoval can sign. When I click share, it's going to tell me that the document has been shared, now waiting on others. I want you to see something in the loop. Notice that all these other documents that I left out in the transaction says not shared. If the finance con sales contract has not been shared, it would have the same verbiage here, not shared. But notice that I have shared this with the consumer. It now says waiting on others. So you can look and see what documents have gone and what documents have not gone. Also, when you go in, and I want you to look here at the activity log. What the activity log does is give you a history of that loop, and anything that occurs in that loop. When I click on the activity log, you are going to see that I created this loop at this time. I've added all the documents. I've viewed the documents. I have modified documents and I've shared documents. And it gives the timestamp on that. What you can do is you can track a lot of times other agents saying, I wonder if the uh, buyer has looked at the documents and I'm going to show you, it will tell you when I look at the documents. It'll tell you, uh, tell you when you sent them. It'll tell, them, tell you when the other agent has looked at it. So it's very helpful on the activity log. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to go back and now what I am going to do is I'm going to be the consumer. And notice right here, I check my email and it says Mike Sandoval via dot loop. Please review the finance sales contract. Mike has shared a document with you for review. So when I click on it, notice my picture here. If you had uploaded a picture of them or their house, it would appear right here. But it says here, Mike has shared a document for your loop and the names of the loop. So I'm going to click view document. Now, a couple of things happen. Upper right hand corner says start signing. And you'll notice that I get a dot loop copy of the finance sales contract. And as soon as I click start signing, what dot loop is going to do is walk me to every field that I'm either going to have to sign or initial 
and it's going to allow me to sign and initial that proper field. So when I click start signing, notice that it takes me to the first field and I'm going to initial right here. When I initial, it's going to pop up with a signature and initials. And that's the way it's going to look through the entire transaction. I'm going to adopt the signature. Now, if I wanted to, I could draw a signature and some people want to have their own squiggly lines. You could do that either here. If they want to, they could go ahead and do this. And that's going to be their signature throughout. Their initials could be like this. And that's the way it'll be throughout. Some people like that for security. Most people just go ahead and accept this typed signature. So throughout the signature, every place that, I mean, throughout the transaction, every place that requires a signature, here it is. Every place that needs an initial, here it is. I'm going to click on, on adopt and sign. And when I do notice that it put my initials, it put a date and a timestamp on it. And this is vitally important because that tells you that the person has seen it, signed it, and then they're going to send it back. You will click here. Notice that it walks you to each one of the steps that you need to go through in this transaction to either sign or initial. And notice that it just says one side. It doesn't say that I can click here, might click here. Now notice how it changed from start signing to finish signing. And what I've done is I've gone through in every one of the documents, it says that I'm to pick, click here, click here, click here. Once I have done with all the documents, I click finish signing. And what it's going to do is dot loop's going to pop up. They don't have to recommend the product and they don't have to sign up for a free dot loop account. So now what we have done is we have seen as the agent what the steps are to add the documents, add the people, put the information on the documents, and send it to the consumer. We have sat in the consumer's seat, and we have seen how we sign, how we look at the documents. We click sign, 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 finish signing, and it sends it back. So now what I'm going to do is assume the role again of the agent. Now, remember the loop is 816. Mike Sandoval, 816. Now, notice here that it pops up, but there is a red bell here. That indicates that there's some notifications. When I open it up, I'll find out what those notifications are. Notice right here where everything was not shared and then it said waiting on others. Well, you'll look right here and you will now see where it says sign. That indicates that the party you sent this to has signed all the doc, all the necessary fields and have sent it back to you. Remember the activity log. I'm going to show you how to click on the activity log and you're going to see that Mike Sandoval, the consumer, signed the document at this time. Mike Sandoval, the consumer, viewed the document at this time. Mike Sandoval, the agent, shared this document at this time. So you're going to get a history. And when I send it to the other agent, it's going to show the same history. So you're able to check on everything through the activity log. Looking at your documents, you can see where it has been signed. And now what you would do is click this. You would get share. And now what you're going to do is share it with the listing agent or the seller, whichever case may be. But you're going to share it to them. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Dot Loop. Dot Loop is a wonderful document management system. It comes with your membership to ValleyMLS.com. You don't pay anything additional. If you were paying for this outside, it would cost you $29.99 a month. You have unlimited loops. You have all the documents that you need inside the loop to have a transaction. You're able to set up people with their email, send it to them, enter the information once, and dot loop auto-populates it to every field that is part of the transaction. I hope that you found this to be helpful and look for other classes to be taking place. It has been an honor 
and I look forward to seeing you on the next class. Thank you.